Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, you've probably never thought really about this before, um, but some days of the church year are really crappy for people like myself to preach. I have found over the five plus years I've been with you all that these festival days are particularly hard to preach. Bear with me a moment. It's already difficult to come up with something new to preach every week, but then you've got these days like Pentecost and Holy Trinity Sunday, um, and then more days like Reformation and All Saints, and they always have the same texts every year. Like the rest of the year is in a three-year cycle, but the themes, the texts are always the same on these festival days. And there's just, you get to this moment like where you're like, what else am I going to preach about Jesus being born for this Christmas that's going to be new for people? Or like, Reformation again, or my favorite is actually Trinity. What am I going to find that's awesome about the Trinity this year? This, the reason why I went and changed out of my green into white, um, is, holy, is uh, Christ the King Sunday. It's one of these festival Sundays. Um, we don't have the same readings every year for Christ the King like other festivals, um, but the theme is the same, Christ the King. However, I love this festival day. I love Christ the King Sunday. I love rolling up my sleeves and preaching on this day. You want to know why? You're going to find out. Because the theme of this day hits us right in the gut. Christ is King. At least, Christ is supposed to be King. That's why it's fun to preach, because we are not good at this one. Christ is rarely King in our lives, individually and corporately, right? And if we're honest with ourselves, so I have lots to say today. Yes. First of all, I find the whole Christ the King um, language to be pretty understandable, really, as opposed to Sundays, festival Sundays like Transfiguration Sunday. Like, what is that all about? But Christ the King is, we can get that one, right? We know Christ the King. It's not a tough idea to wrap our heads around. God showed up, God became King then. And it's still showing up now, and his kingdom still goes on. Although, God's kingdom doesn't look as we would expect. And so I find this day refreshing, fun. I mean, think about it. This is the last Sunday of the church year, right? For us liturgical church year dork kind of people, this is the last year of the church calendar. Next week, we could do like New Year's Day, I guess, if you want to come next week for Advent number one. This is the last day of the year. So we've spent this whole year telling the story of our faith, right? In, in the, our, our church calendar and our, the, the events of the, of the year. We began with anticipation of birth, as we will next week. The anticipation of, of God breaking into the world. Then we had the shocking birth of Jesus in the stinky stable barn kind of place. And then we heard story after story from Luke this year of this radical life of questioning the status quo, the norms of any day, really, Jesus' day and our own, infuriating so many people along the way, did Jesus. And so infuriated were they that they killed him. He was arrested, crucified, and then, of course, resurrected. And then he, he challenges those who follow him then and follow him for all time to continue that radical way of life, breaking the expectations of the world, standing opposed to the culture of our world, and creating more disciples to do this work for generation and generation. And so finally, we come to this last Sunday in the story, the last day, and it's so simple. After all that, Jesus is Lord. Christ is King. So simple, yet so far from us, right? I mean, we have this yearning inside of us. We want Christ to be king. We yearn for it. Our heart aches for a a world where God's kingdom rules now. But often we cannot get out of the stinking way, right? Like this Thursday. Who's excited for this Thursday? Like, nobody, it's Thanksgiving. You guys are awful. No one, I don't even want to know what goes on at your house on Thursday. If anyone kept their hand down, like, oh, my family, yeah. 
Look and see who's watching you. I love this Thursday. I love Thanksgiving. Honestly, I cannot wait to be with our family. I said our family. I love being with my family and Stacy's family on Thanksgiving Day. And we are lucky because we grew up like 10 minutes from each other. And so we can do my, my, my parents' house in the afternoon, like the early afternoon for lunch. And then we'll go over and be with her family's, um, at her mom and dad's house for like the later afternoon, evening, like another feast of Thanksgiving. A whole day of family. And I love that. That's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Because in our families, there are no crazy expectations. I don't need to be someone or something that I'm not. It's just family. It's just being together. It's just honestly being with people that we love and being thankful for them and for what we've got. And so... This is hopefully your scene, too, or something like this. Maybe you don't get to see all the family members, but, I mean, this is kind of the scene across the country, right? If you pop on Facebook Thursday, you'll see all this stuff about people being happy with their families. And who's going to do that on Thursday? You can be honest this time. Yeah, we're going to be with our families on Thursday. Beautiful, right? Thanksgiving is truly a kingdom of God moment. It is a Christ is King moment moment on Thursday, when Christ is king in our lives. And I think if that looks like something, it looks like Thanksgiving. People together, happy, appreciating what they have, loving each other. You know where I'm going with this, because Thursday leads to Friday. Ironically, our culture shifts from that radical peace, shalom, love, thankfulness, amazing kingdom of God moment to this other moment, a greed sort of moment, and one that, that increases exponentially, seemingly, every year. Before most families have even had the chance to dig into their pumpkin pie or Dutch apple pies for dessert, some have to walk off to their work in retail. The world will call out moms and dads, teenagers and young adults who have to go to the malls and strip malls and other plazas to go shop. Every year, these stores begin opening a little bit earlier. This year, 7 o'clock or 10 o'clock or that evening time seems to be the time places are opening up. I think the malls open at like 7 o'clock this year, and every store has to be open at some point in the evening there. Shocking as it may seem, Kmart open at 6 this year. Not 6 p.m., 6 a.m. on Thanksgiving. Yes, Kmart will be making a store full of employees and stores full of employees work all day on Thanksgiving. And I will confess, this culture appalls me. It appalls me as a Christian. I mean, nursing homes, hospitals, police stations, I understand on Thanksgiving. I get that. Those people are heroes for those days, working when, when the culture needs them to work. We have nurses in our family who miss these moments for their work, for their vocation. But in my opinion, there is no reason in this kingdom where Christ is supposed to be king why anyone needs to work at Kmart at 6 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. And friends, we don't need to shop. We do not need to support a culture that sends single mothers from their families at 5 to 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving evening. We do not, do not need to support a culture that teaches our teenagers that their place is working at their part-time job at Dick's or Best Buy on Thanksgiving night and leaving their families. I mean, seriously, you want to know why families are struggling and having a tough time in our culture, and can't seem to find time for one another? I mean, think of the insane systems of greed and power that we are supporting on this evening of sending our people to work. And of course, by Friday at lunch, we will have heard story after story on news about people who got bull rushed by the crowds. And you know who those people typically are? Kids, older folks. You know, the sort of people that Jesus kind of always talked about being the prime ones in his kingdom, the meek, the children, Black Friday. Who is king? What is king? It isn't all about Black Friday. It is ironic that Friday is called Black Friday, right? What color are we wearing today after I got the green off? Our violation of the first commandment 
runs rampant in our world, if we're honest with ourselves, and in our individual lives. We show up on Sundays claiming that Jesus is Lord, but yet our behavior and our lifestyles between Sunday mornings hardly resembles that. We as Christians have the special gift of taking sacred faith holidays like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter and turning them into days of radical consumerism, if not focusing on random side stories like Santa Claus and Easter bunnies. Granted, irony is part of our story on this day, right? Beautifully, that gospel story for those who had ears to hear it. Um, On this Christ the King Sunday is the story of Jesus on the cross, being crucified. Initially, we are prone to think that things are wrong. This is Christ the King Sunday. Jesus is Lord. Why are we glimpsing the cross? If Jesus is King... We want to see that moment of shining glory, right? We want to see victory. We want to see triumph. Why this moment? Why the cross? Why that moment when he is being beaten and hanging on the cross? Why that moment where the crowds, the religious leaders, the faithful people are either running away or mocking him to his face, verbally abusing him or physically abusing him? Why that moment where even one of the criminals on the cross beside him can't help but mock Jesus? How on earth does that moment show Jesus our Lord? Well, because God's kingdom isn't what we expect. It isn't what those around us expect or raise up as the model in our world. Jesus lives this life of radical love and care for each other. The story we've been telling for the last year, craziness. He's always pouring himself out for the other people caring for others, offering his very living up as a sacrifice, teaching, discipling. The cross isn't something different from what he's been doing all along. It's just the fulfillment. It's the fulfillment of everything that he has talked about and been teaching. In that gospel reading we just heard, we see God's kingdom in its raw and unadulterated way. We do see the glory of God stripped down, vulnerable, and real. Because when God is king, people persecute him and he forgives them. When people come to him for help, he deeply cares for them and affirms their place in his kingdom as the second criminal did. When God is king, death is hardly death. So friends, I invite you this morning, on this last Sunday of the church year to reevaluate your world. Claim Christ is King for yourselves. Claim it right now. We'll claim it with you. And then we'll do it together because Christ is King. And then maybe we make that true in our lives. Amen.